Uh, welcome back. So uh, now we'd like to look at NMOS device in inversion. Okay. So I'm not really going through the motions of drawing the band diagram. I'm simply showing you. But by now, I think you should be familiar. So whenever, if you want to get inversion, we need to apply a positive gate voltage. So VG is positive and large, actually. It's not simple. We are actually going beyond inversion. We will discuss that in a moment. And large. Okay. And because of that, you have... Uh, first you have depletion of the semiconductor and then we have inversion. Okay. So what happens, you know, uh, to understand this, let's try to first look at the, you know, bulk region. Let's say we have here, there is 5F. Okay. Let's say this is basically NA equal to 10 power 17. Let's take this as an example. Okay. So, now, if you change your concentration at the surface, okay, so I'll say the whole, uh, okay, so basically you can have, if you have the whole concentration, if this is P, and I have my 10 power 17 at equilibrium, okay, I should, okay, so if I go here, you know, if I increase my whole concentration, I'm calling this as accumulation. Okay. And when I go lower than this, I'm calling it depletion. Okay. So once I cross my, once my EF at the surface, this is EF at the surface, right? If it crosses my EI, essentially the whole concentration is less, less than the intrinsic whole concentration, right? So what you have now is basically the Fermi level is closer to EC. So EC, yeah. So because of that, you have holes. Okay, and we define the we deplete we keep as we keep increasing the gate voltage. Suppose in this case, let's say I'll link this is my gate voltage axis VG. Initially zero, I'll be at flat band, right? This is it. This is zero flat band. Band, and then as I increase VG, I'll first reach. Uh, Depletion. This will be the depletion region. And after depletion, at some point, we are going to get into what is known as inversion. Okay. This switch is called as threshold voltage. Okay. What is this threshold voltage? To analyze that, first we will look at uh, the surface potential. Okay. So, the way we define uh, threshold is the in this in the case of an nmos device or rather number of inversion charges at surface is equal to number of majority carriers carriers in bulk by which we mean that let's say in this case 10 power 17 is a number of holes in the bulk then we need to have 10 power 17 electrons at the interface. Okay, so here, 10 power 17 electrons at interface. How do you know that? Well, I mean, I have carefully drawn this in such a way that this is my phi f, and even this is going to be my phi f. The distance is phi f again. Okay, so now what is the surface potential here? Psi s should be equal to uh, EI, we'll take the EF as a reference level. So in the bulk, it is phi F minus, in the surface, it is actually minus EF, minus phi F. Okay, minus of minus phi F equal to two phi F. So this is bulk, this is interface. Okay. So basically, whenever surface potential reaches 2 phi f, we say that there is inversion. Okay. We still have to relate surface potential to the gate voltage. We will do that in a moment. Before I go into that, I want to discuss the way the charges look like. Okay. So what happens is we are we are applying positive voltage. So there's going to be a positive charge on this side plus q. And then what happens to the 
semiconductor, we have depleted it. So there's going to be some depletion charge minus Q. Okay. But as we increase the depletion, there is electron hole pair generation in the so in the depletion region, right? So this is EHP generation in depletion region. This becomes significant after a point, right? If there is deplete, if there is EHP generation, where will the charge go? Well, we will again redraw this just before inversion is reached. Let's say, what is the electric field? The electric field is going to be this and this, right? This is just before electric uh, inversion, but once you reach inversion, essentially what we are saying is, I mean, well, let's say we cross the inversion, we have electron hole pairs generated. Electrons will come in this direction. Electrons will move here. N will go this direction. Holes will go into the bulk because the electric field is in the plus six direction. Okay. So what happens is whenever inversion is reached, you're going to have an additional charge at the interface. This is electrons at interface. Okay. The total now, once inversion is used, okay, I don't have space. Let me create some space here by moving this up slightly. Yeah. So at inversion or in inversion, QG equal to Q depletion plus Q inversion. So in the semiconductor, there are two types of charges. One is the depletion charge, which is fixed. Okay. But electron hole pairs that are generated are free to move about. So electrons will come towards the interface. Okay. Just at the interface, it's a very, very thin layer of depletion inversion charge. Okay. And because of that, this discontinuity will actually increase. If you look at uh, this, uh, we will give you this as an exercise. Okay, so look at this. If you look at E oxide divided by E of silicon, this will be greater than three, much, much greater than three in inversion. Okay. We will give you this as an exercise. There will be a nano hub tool and then uh, I'll show you in the uh, short demo at the end of this week, but you will also be able to run it and check it out for yourself. Okay. If you have inversion charge, this is how it will behave. So the inversion charge also is at the interface. You should not forget, you should remember that. Okay. It's and then the holes anyway will go into the bulk. How will the potential look like? If you are right at inversion, the potential is going to be simply again the same quadratic behavior. This is psi s. Sorry. And then there is a linear variation here. And the total is my Vg. So the voltage still falls always across the two uh, oxide and the semiconductor. So this will help us actually derive what is the relation between the gate voltage and the size. Remember we said uh, at threshold psi s is 2 pi f. That's something that we can easily compute. But uh, let's look at uh, you know, what is the exact relation. So what we are seeing is Vg is equal to oxide potential plus surface potential, right? So potential drop across the, across the semiconductor. So this is simply going to be epsilon oxide, sorry, not epsilon, electric field across oxide times the oxide thickness. And by applying Gauss law, we know that this guy is going to be epsilon silicon, electric field in silicon divided by epsilon in oxide. Okay, so I'll make these substitutions and I also know that this is basically QNA by epsilon silicon times the width of the depletion region. Okay. So I'll make these substitutions. I just showed a sequence of substitutions. So if you do all that, what you get is VG equal to uh, electric field oxide, so epsilon silicon, electric field in silicon, so that I'll write it as uh, 
Q and A times W divided by epsilon oxide and epsilon silicon. So this will go, epsilon silicon will go. Oh, there's a T oxide. So there's a T oxide forgot. So this is basically going to be Q and A W by epsilon ox divided by T ox. Okay. Of course, plus psi s is always there. Plus psi s. Okay. This particular term is oxide capacitance. This term, term is Q depletion. Remember, when you have uh, charge, we have the depletion charge here, right? The space charge. The This was Na and this was W. So Q depletion will be Q and A W. Okay. And it's negative, so I'll just put a negative charge here. So the relation between gate voltage and the surface potential is this. Vg equal to minus Q D, just to indicate that it's a depletion charge by C ox. C ox plus psi s. Okay. So this is how uh, the gate and the surface potential are related. So in the next class, we will uh, we will do some problems and we'll try to analyze a little bit more depth. Okay. But before I close today, I just wanted to quickly uh, talk about what happens in a PMOS device. Okay. So I have so far I have discussed only the NMOS device. So we have taken a P-type substrate. But in a PMOS device, we have to take an n-type substrate. Okay. You take an n-type substrate and then apply a positive voltage, then you will have accumulation. Okay. Vg greater than zero, you have accumulation. So please, you know, take your time and then draw these diagrams by yourself. That's, I mean, I don't want to, I didn't want to spend time drawing these again, so I just I'm showing you one shot. But you should definitely draw okay, by yourself. You can try to, you know use this as a reference, but try to do it by yourself and compare with the answer here. Okay. All right. So you any accumulation, when you apply a positive voltage, you have uh, electrons accumulating at the interface. That's what we are showing here. Uh, this is electrons at interface. It's going to be the exact opposite of whatever we saw in the N mass case in a P mass. This is plus Q, right? Gate charge. Now, if you deplete, you will have this exposed donors, okay, and minus Q in your gate voltage. So we have to apply Vg of less than zero for a PMOS device. In NMOS device, we applied greater than zero. In PMOS device, we have to apply less than zero so that we have we are depleting, we are pushing the electrons away from the interface, okay. And then you continue increasing your uh, so uh, gate voltage, you will reach inversion. So basically, one of the ways of representing depletion is basically when your surface potential is between 0 and 2 pi f. This we call it as depletion review, depletion. The surface potential, surface potential is greater than 2 pi f or at 2 pi, greater than or equal to 2 pi f, we call it inversion. Okay. So in this picture, I'm representing uh, just slightly above inversion. Okay. So in this case, what happens is you have this exposed donors, which are contributing the positive charge. This is your minus Q anyway. And you have an additional inversion charge, charge at interface. Okay. How is this coming to the interface? Well, you have this depletion region, which has been you know out of equilibrium, right? We have removed all the majority carriers. So then the semiconductor tries to come back to equilibrium by generating electron hole pairs. When these electron hole pairs are generated, because the field is in the negative direction, right? This is the direction of field here. Holes will come towards the interface and electrons will go into the bulk. So that's why you have these holes. And that is why we call it the PMOS device. So PMOS device implies holes are inversion charges.
and mass device implies electrons or inversion charges okay that's the name that's why whenever we want to talk of pmos device we take an n type substrate and invert it that means we convert n type you know you should have ideally electrons there but then we deplete it and then we make it have holes we are switching it we are inverting the semiconductor that's why we have holes as inversion charges and in a uh, this is in a pmos device in a nmos device electrons will be the inversion charges so that's why we start with the p type substrate okay so i hope this you know is clear to you this is not a simple thing i mean this is something that you know i remember when i first learned it uh, it looked like i learned it i understood but then when i look at it after a couple of years i realize that i have not fully understood it okay it takes some time for you to understand so please go through it a couple of times understand the physical mechanism so all these diagrams might look like you know a lot of shapes lot of variations but they are all very simple to draw if you go it in a logical go towards it in a logical way that i have been using you know just go step by step and all of this will be clear okay and we will we will try to solve some problems in the next class and we'll also uh, relax certain assumptions that we made for an ideal mass capacitor okay and so yeah we'll do that in the next class thank you so much for your attention and i'll see you in the next lecture bye